I think what's important about what we do, and I think this is general at, at UC Santa Cruz, is we're engaged in basic research, answering really fundamental questions about how cells work, how proteins work, how the body works. So that allows us a lot of flexibility to really delve into the most basic biology, the most basic biochemistry. And I think that's really important for coming up with really innovative ideas. The most innovative ideas come from doing basic research. And that's what we do at, at UC Santa Cruz. So I have always been fascinated with proteins. The proteins in the cell, there are proteins that act as stop signs and go signs for cell division. And we want to understand what makes a protein a stop sign, what turns it into a go sign, and why cancer cells, they're go signs when they're, they're supposed to be stop signs. There's an important new line of cancer therapy and it's called immunotherapy. And it's essentially trying to, instead of go after the cancer cells directly, trying to activate the body's own immune system to go after the tumors. So what we're trying to do is to make that process more efficient and more effective. My lab is interested in molecular mechanisms of aging, specifically focused on Alzheimer's disorder, and we're beginning to become more and more interested in other memory diseases. One approach that we've decided to take is to use yeast as a tool for discovering these compounds that would act as, as modulators of the immune system. Because we're an aging society, life expectancy is rising, and Alzheimer remains a disease for which there is no cure, those numbers are projected to double by 2050. We developed a screen in yeast and used the chemical screening center here at UCSC to perform the screen and we've looked at thousands of drugs so far, uh, potential drugs, and have come up with some interesting lead compounds. Proteins are these very large complex molecules. They're these long chains, you can think of them as Christmas lights folded up into structures. And like Christmas lights, each unit within the long chain has its own different color, has its own different chemical functionality to it. So we use techniques that allow us to look at structures of proteins at atomic resolution where we can see all the atoms in the protein. And we use that information to understand how they function. Evgeny, Scott, and I, I think our work really synergizes with each other. The Screening Center has really fostered a, a lot of collaborations. Collaboration nowadays is becoming more and more critical because the problems we're trying to go after are becoming increasingly complex. Obviously, we're going after an important problem, and we would love to make a contribution to solving it. The other thing, of course, is academic research is an educational thing, so this is another very critical thing. We are taking students and we're preparing them for a life of independence. The graduate students in the lab really do everything. They're their own independent scientists. Without grad students, an academic lab is simply not possible. And so this is also an integral component, I would say, of any academic setting. So I have a graduate student who actually worked for um, some time in Seth's lab. Seth has benefited from the screening center and our expertise in small molecules and organic chemistry. My favorite aspect of research is sitting down with graduate students and postdocs and undergrads and talking about research problems. Hashing through data that we don't quite understand yet, that we're, we're trying to come to grips with, and designing the next round of experiments that will help us answer the questions. We're synthetic organic chemists, we're stereochemists, but we continue to evolve, we continue to follow that path for which we don't know where it will lead us and probably there is never an end to a path because it always continues somehow to evolve.